it's normal to get nervous before a speaking test. You're required to think on your feet, combine all the English skills you've practiced, and deliver them all as naturally as possible. It's tricky, but don't worry. I'm going to show you how to pass any English speaking test. My name's Natasha, and in this video, I'll give you tips, tricks, and strategies to improve your fluency, vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. Let's do it. We'll start by looking at fluency. In order to increase your fluency, it's important to reduce hesitation as much as possible. We usually hesitate in our speech when we spend too long thinking about what we want to say and what words to use. To cut these long pauses, or ums and ahs, we can cleverly create thinking time for ourselves. For example, you might use a phrase like, that's a really interesting question, I hadn't thought of that before, while you prepare some ideas in your mind. Sometimes our lack of fluency can come down to a lack of ideas as well as extending those ideas. It's important to be well-read on as many topics as possible so you can draw on different ideas in a test setting. The more topics you know, the more topics you can speak about on test day. To increase fluency, it's also important to speak with situational appropriacy. Situational appropriacy refers to the context that you're speaking in. Are you conducting a role play with a patient or client? Maybe you're giving a presentation on a particular topic, or perhaps you're answering questions in an interview about your career or hometown. Whatever the situation is, you must make sure that your speech is as relevant as possible. If your ideas are relevant, they'll flow more easily. Let's look at an example speaking prompt, but before we do, don't forget to subscribe. Here's the prompt. It says, describe your current job. You should say what it is, where you work, why you chose that job, and why you like or dislike it. When it comes to a speaking task such as this, we can see that it's a bit like an informal presentation. You probably have to speak at length on the given topic, and there are suggestions about what to talk about in relation to your career. These suggestions will help you think of appropriate things to say and keep talking for the allotted time, helping you score higher in fluency. It's really important that you always evaluate the situation and context that you're in, and then choose the most appropriate language. This connects us to the next area of speaking, vocabulary. When it comes to vocabulary in an English speaking test, you need to showcase your range by using a rich and wide set of word choices that would be appropriate for any given topic. Building your repertoire takes time, but it's essential for a high score on any type of English test. One way to do this is to use synonyms. For example, when explaining your job, you might call it a career, a role, a position, profession, or employment. By using different words to express the same ideas, you avoid repetition and can showcase your range. Of course, it's important to use appropriate synonyms for the specific context. It's also a great idea to incorporate idiomatic language to display your range of language, as well as a sense of creativity. If we consider the speaking prompt shown before, we can use some idiomatic expressions to show our vocabulary range. For example, you might say, once in a blue moon, to describe a part of your role that you perform only once in a while, or I really get a kick out of, and then name some specific part of your job that you enjoy doing. Remember, it's okay to make something up to demonstrate your vocabulary range. If your hobby is reading, but you want to say something more interesting, why not say your hobby is taking part in historical reenactments or foraging for wild edible plants? Just remember to always focus on being clear and accurate. This leads me into my next point, grammar. Sometimes creating a story or saying something untrue can allow you to be more flexible with your grammatical structures. So, again, it's okay to make something up in order to demonstrate your range of grammar structures. For example, if you don't have a job and you're asked about what you do for work, you can explain this and propose a career that you're interested in and why. Here's what that might sound like. At the moment, 
I'm not employed as I'm still completing my undergraduate degree. However, I would like to pursue a career in the field that I'm currently studying, early childhood education. I have a passion for working with young children and helping them in the early years to build literacy skills. I'm really looking forward to beginning a work placement later this year at a local preschool. You should also use a variety of sentence structures to help boost your score in grammar. If you use too many simple sentences in a row, you might sound beginner-like and abrupt, but incorporating some complex sentences will showcase how you can extend your ideas and speak with confidence. Another way to score well on grammar and speaking is to extend your ideas, which you can do with certain words, namely relative pronouns like which, that, who, and where. Relative pronouns allow us to clarify something we're talking about. For example, someone explaining their job might say, I work for a technology company which specializes in creating software for healthcare providers. Having words like which, that, who, and where in the back of your mind will help you to speak with sentences that include relative or dependent clauses, which will help you to show your range of grammatical structures. Finally, let's look at pronunciation. To score well for pronunciation, you need to use the correct sounds of the English language, which can be different from your first language. A common mistake non-native English speakers make is mistaking the V sound with a W sound and vice versa. For example, then is wrong, when is correct, wary is wrong, very is correct. You also need to use intonation when your voice goes up and down because you need to avoid speaking in monotone. For example, I believe my current role is not challenging me enough anymore. Because I have been in this job for two years now, I have become bored with the day-to-day -day duties. Did you notice the flat tone? It's very difficult to follow what the speaker is saying. You also need to speak with meaning. This includes using correct word and sentence stress, good rhythm, using connected speech, and having the right pace, neither too fast nor too slow. For example, I believe my current role is not challenging me enough anymore. Because I've been in this job for two years now, I have become bored with the day-to-day -day duties. As we just heard, this helps the listener understand your meaning and feelings so you score higher in speaking. Okay, let's quickly recap those speaking tips, tricks, and strategies so you can pass any English speaking test. In speaking, to improve fluency, reduce hesitation and create thinking time, and speak with situational appropriacy for the context you're speaking in. To enhance vocabulary, use synonyms, incorporate idiomatic expressions, and you can make something up to demonstrate your vocabulary range. It's also okay to make something up in grammar. Don't forget to use a variety of sentence structures and extend your ideas with certain words like relative pronouns. And finally, in pronunciation, use the correct sounds of the English language, use intonation to emphasize certain words, and speak with meaning. If you would like more English speaking practice, head over to e2english.com. We have courses that cater to all English skill levels, designed to boost your grammar and vocabulary and pronunciation skills. And that's it. Keep practicing and best of luck.